Welcome to Street Chat, where we chat on the streets. I guess the post-retirement theme for you has been development, whether it's been on the ice and off the ice. And we do have to give a quick shout out to Endeavor Sports Group. So let's talk about your involvement with them. As I retired and came back, I worked for a couple of years with Mike. And um, what Mike does is he works with kids that are looking to develop as a hockey player, but more importantly, are looking to develop as human beings and as scholars. And if I could put anybody in charge of my kid with giving him direction, whether the kid wants to hear it or not, it would be Mike. We'll flip gears here a little. We'll talk about your role in uh, helping out Indigenous communities and the youth. I want to be able to help communities help themselves. That's what that's a, that's kind of what we want. We want to go in there to create sustainable programming that a community can take over after three, five years, and they can we can go back to consult and to clean up and to help with any questions. But over a period of time, they would just have a they have a good program that they could use for using sport for development. And what we're trying to do is show our politicians and people who want to be involved, who want to make a difference, that throwing money at it doesn't work anymore. They've tried it for 70 years and it's never over the long haul benefited anybody but the person who's receiving the money for a short period of time. The programming hasn't gone to the level that you would hope. So there has to be capacity building, leadership building, program building, uh, sustainability. And this is what we're trying to do. And we're using sport as our vehicle, but education is on an equal footing, if not even a higher footing than what we're trying to use it for. If you've never been to the North, you don't understand the hardships the kids go through and the people go through every day. So if you are in Ottawa here and you see a program at a university or a school or, or community center, you can give them X amount of dollars it's going to be used, hopefully portions of it, uh, for the for the for the right use. But in the north, sometimes or a lot of times, it wasn't because they didn't have the capacity to do it. So the people in the south saying, "Well, say this community needs this, so let's give them four million bucks," but they had no understanding of how to use the four million dollars properly because there was no capacity to do it. There's no they were, they had never had to do it before. They'd never done it before. So the the will was good, the want and the understanding wasn't, and that's what's changing more and more now with the people that are going up there have an education on an experience in the North. And it's making it better for everybody, the people who are giving and the people who are receiving. And that's going to make for sustainable and good programming that I think we're going to see the benefits. And we already are seeing the benefits of it in our communities now with the education levels of a lot, that a lot of these kids are getting. The person who said it the best to retired professional athletes was Charles Barkley. You're always thinking about what's best for you, but when you leave the game, all of a sudden that's not as important. So what Barkley says, you got to do something that's bigger than you, because your whole life has been about you. And if the, the players and the people and the professionals that get that quicker are the ones who understand or are able to succeed, and some players never get it. They never get the fact that as much as you thought it was about you, it's even less so now that you're not there. You're not John Shabbat NHL player anymore. You're John Shabbat, Joe Citizen. But you understand that, and you can still use a platform that you have to move beyond where you were to something that's much better. I mean, I, I realized that before I stopped playing, and it had a bit to do with my upbringing. Yes, it had a lot to do with being an Indigenous person, but it also had a lot to do with having kids and having a wife who understood that, um, who gave up a shitload of her life to raise kids and travel with me. And... You know, if you can realize what your family gives up for you as a professional athlete, then it's much easier for you to understand what you should give up for them or for some other people. Uh, funniest player you ever played with? Uh, Rob Doyle um, in uh, in Frankfurt, Germany. He's a Canadian boy, but he, he was a funny guy. But I've, I've, you know, since I've retired, I've met so many guys in the game that can just that that just I mean they're they're funny men but yeah Rob Doyle is probably one of the funniest guys I played with. Where's an indigenous community you'd recommend people visit? Delaney NWT. It's uh, about two hours north, flight north of uh, Yellowknife. It's got world class trout fishing. It's got world class hunting. Um, it's a great community in the fact that you're isolated, but the support system in the community itself is one of the best in Canada. What's the best part about playing in Europe? Family. 
Uh, you don't. It's not about the, just about the game. Uh, you you play Friday, Sunday, Mondays are off. Tuesdays you have two days. Tuesday night's a huge party. It's called a Cabina Fest. Wednesday, Thursday you prep. Friday, Saturday, Friday, Sunday you play, and it's the same every week. So in Europe, there's a lot of family. You don't spend hours at the rink. Um, you get a lot of time to be with your kids and take them to school and, and be part of a family. You don't really get a chance to here in North America. What do you want your legacy to be? That I gave back, whether it be through my kids or through the communities I work in. Um, to have people who have said and have told me that what I've told them and how I've acted has changed their life is means way more to me than uh, anything I ever did in hockey. When I say Shabbat Shaboom, you say... <laughs> Shabbat Shaboom! Yeah. Every every time I scored, that came on, and uh, my kids saw it the other day, and they put it on. We have a little WhatsApp thing, and they threw it on. They said, "Dad, what the hell is this? You know who's in there? Is Gerard Gallant? Yeah, I saw it. The and Adam time. Graves and and uh, and Brent Ashton. Um, yeah, I just I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I was an NHL player, and I played pro for 20 years. But this is why I'm here. I'm here to work in the north and work with kids.